Welcome to another episode of Hidden in Plain Sight. This is the third installment in a series about the Black nobility family. If you have not seen the first two episodes, they will be linked at the end. So today we're going to be speaking about the queens of old and how they continue to rule today behind the scenes. The ancient queens who unalived their very own husbands to marry their own sons and place them on the thrones of the world to rule in their names are not to be considered moral agents and benefactors of humanity. They acted in ways consistent with Luciferian female cults whose history goes back to the time of Atlantis. The revelations concerning the origin and history of the Templars and female Illuminati, also known as the Order of Scion, directly impact the saga of the Black nobility, whose origins also trace back to ancient Egypt. This intriguing connection to the Old World is particularly visible when we research one of the most important Black nobility families, the House of Orange. The House of Orange is a most ancient institution. The dynasty has long intermarried with many other noble families throughout Europe and the world. After converting to being Protestants, their descendants crossed to Britain when, in 1690, they became ruling monarchs, ancestors of today's Windsors. But what do we know of their origins? So much has been written and said of them, and yet, what does the man in the street know about Queen Elizabeth or Queen Beatrix? What do we know of their one-time enemy, the papacy, which denied them the world power they sought but lost? And what power remains in their hands? Given that the designations, Protestant and Catholic, serve as convenient disguises for the world controllers, we see that the black nobility have made great use of this camouflage. In my opinion, we are quite wrong to think of them as Protestants. We are equally wrong to consider Papal elites Catholic. Members of these rival groups are to be thought of as Luciferians or Cetion, Atonists. In this sense, they are disciples and perhaps even direct descendants of the cult of Venus, Dragon Court, or Order of Sion. A study of their rites, regalia, heraldry, and symbolism leaves us in no doubt of this fact. Behind the PR veil, members of these families interact with one another, heedless of religious affiliation. The Protestant Dutch royals are related to the Spanish and Hungarian nobility, the members of which, such as King Juan Carlos, are Catholic. For Alpha Lodge members, it's all a matter of window dressing designed to fool the masses. It was worked for centuries, hence their ubiquitous insider smiles. But it said, but what do we know of these oligarchs? What do we know of their ancestors who, after the fall of Akhenaten, set up a new unholy empire in Ireland? What do we know of their other branches, which colonized France, known as Merovingia, to later establish the Knights of Templar? And what do we know of their eastern branches who ruled Persia, Syria, Armenia, and Palestine? Do we know the awesome power of their queens, who after unaliving their very own husbands, married their sons, setting them on the thrones of the world to rule in their names? Do we know that one of these autocrats was the biblical Jesus, who after the death of Nero nearly became emperor? The research of the great Ralph Ellis 
provides us with the best insights into the origin and history of the black nobility. Consequently, readers refer to his monumentally important book, Jesus, King of Edessa. Published in 2012, this superlative work reveals how ancient the families of the black nobility are and how much power they have wielded through the centuries. As Ralph shows in his book, Mary Magdalene, the House of Orange, is related to the descendants of the Hyksos nobility, who after their exile from Egypt, moved to Parthia in Eastern Iran. From this region, they relocated to Syria in 4 AD, after which they are to be found in Provence, France. In the 17th century, after their conversion to being Protestants, they married in with Dutch branches of the dynasty and crossed to Britain where they became the ruling monarchs, the Windsors. This family is really an ancient network descended from notorious pharaohs of old. The network extends across Europe and the world. The black nobility are to be found listed as the rulers of Italy, Sicily, Spain, Portugal, France, Alsace-Lorraine, Greece, Switzerland, Belgium, Holland, and Britain. Among the bloodlines are the houses of Hanover, Habsburg, Lorraine, Welk, Nassau, Hesse, Guys, Estes, Savoy, Marlborough, and Grosvenor. Prince Philip is of the house of Oldenburg. The Queen Mother was the Bowles Lion family. Queen Elizabeth was a descendant of the Saxe Coburg Gotha dynasty, and Prince Charles is a descendant of the Mountbattens, who changed their name from Battenberg to disguise their Germanic origins. This Parthian group were not the first branch of the Hyksos nobility to enter Britain. In fact, over 1,000 years before the first century AD, the main body of Hyksos Atenus set up a new kingdom in Britain, obliterating the Judaic order, the servants of truth in the process. Rouse's investigation into the Parthian Edison nobility does not dwell on the question of female secret societies. Nevertheless, Rouse's findings prove invaluable for those wishing to hone in on this controversial subject. In a video presentation, The Eastern Illuminati, it was mentioned that various power families in personages who constitute less known branches of the Cetian Atenist cabal whose tentacles spread across the planet. In an article, The Cults of Mithras, it was addressed this subject, showing how secret societies of Persia and the Levant were able to draw on the esoteric traditions of the ancient Magi. Before the rise of Zoroastrianism, the cult of Mithras attracted Roman soldiers, merchants, and nobles from all over the Middle East and Eastern Europe. A great many Masonic rituals actually derive from long lost Persian traditions. It was also shown that the Persian Magi were a bona fide branch of the high Aryan Druidic culture and that they too were later suppressed by despotic forces, such as that of Constantine's church, the Templars, and Italian black nobility. Each ignoble group enriched themselves with the hoary traditions and customs of previous cultures now forgotten. A deep study of royal symbolism confirms this, as does a deep study of secret society symbolism. 
Without these antique customs and elements, there would be no royalty, theocracy, or masonry as we know them. Everything we see around us is the modern world, is the result of a massive, age-long campaign of colonization, appropriation, and cannibalization. The masonry that emerged out of the Ghana of Babylon and Atonism of Egypt preserves but does not create. It empowers itself and its members by way of rites and symbols taken from the high Arya by force and cunning. Most importantly, as shown throughout the work, there is hardly a symbol employed which is male. Most of it is absolutely female. And this is a fact completely missed by every researcher and scholar today. In an analysis of the agendas of the world's most powerful secret societies, it is highlighted the role played by Princess Merititen, daughter of Akhenaten, who according to legend lies buried in Country Kerry Island. Meritaten, also known as Skoda, the daughter of Akhenaten and Nefertiti, as revealed in the female Illuminati program, it is alleged that she assumed command of the Sition Atonis after her father's fall and exile. According to legend, her remains lie in County Kerry, Ireland. Her nickname Skoda means the Dark One. It connotes the tribe known as the Scythians who were probably identical with the Haxars nobility. The Scythians, also known as Scots or Scots, were originally from the Northwest, which is why a large part of the Hykas Atonis made for Britain after their exile from Egypt. They sought out their ancient homelands and successfully reestablished their new world order from there. Meritatin's husband was known to the prehistoric Irish as Mill or Mile, and to the Scots as Gaetilos. Ralph Ellis believes he was none other than Pharaoh I or Aya, who was dethroned and forced to flee Egypt after Akhenaten's fall. According to Ellis, his favorite emblem, the red glove, appears on the flag of Northern Ireland. The couple frequented the Inverns of County Down. On the insignia of Ulster, you will also see the star of the Davids, or Atonis, the Red Cross, normally associated with the Templars, also appears. It denotes the Alpha Lodges of Masonry, specifically the Knights of the Garter, Order of St. Michael and St. George, and the Myrad, lesser orgs under their control, such as the Orange Order and Black Preceptory. Ralph Ellis entertains the interesting idea that the remains of Queen Tai, mother of Pharaoh Akhenaten, lie in Tara, Ireland. If this is true, Ireland's history will be greatly changed forever. Tai was a great royal wife, which means she was a member and perhaps leader of the female dragon court. If her resting place is Ireland, then the Dragon Court's possible headquarters wasn't Egypt, but Ireland. Given that Tai's father, Akhenaten's uncle, was Aya, husband of Meritaten, we see that Ireland was indeed home to senior Setian Atonis. In Irish mythology, Taya appears as Queen T. Tefi said to be buried at or near Tara, 
high capital of the Irish chieftains, the Mausian Gaelic kings. The symbolism incorporated into the design of Tyra of the central mound is patently female. The stone of fall, which originally lay at Tyra, is now the coronation stone under St. Edward's chair on which British monarchs are crowned. What a surprise. Again, the symbolism tells us that although the nations and empires may be openly governed by male continents, the real power behind the throne is female. Indeed, the very symbolism of the throne is female, representing the great seat, Isis. Katara in Ireland, capital of the High Kings, be named after Egypt's Queen Kai, mother of Akhenaten. Was she laid to rest at this site? What does this mean for world history if the most powerful dynasty of Athens reestablished their corrupt empire in the West? Although Ireland became their home, the Sitian Athens were responsible for obliterating the Druids and Bards. That story is told in English Origins of Civilization. From the ancient Western Arya, they appropriated the elements of civilization, subsequently employed for deceptive and inhuman purposes. Returning to the Parthian branch of the Setian Atonis, two female figures emerge as leading characters. They are Queen Thea, Muse, Orania, and her daughter, Queen Julia, Helena of Adiabin. They lived during the first century AD, and being kin of the power crazed matriarch Cleopatra, they were legal claimants to the rulership of the entire Roman Empire. After converting to Judaism, Helena settled in Edessa and conspired to place her son on the throne of the Roman Empire to therefore become ruler of the world in her name. Queen Thea, Muse, Arania, born 44 BC, is revealed by Ralph Ellis to have been the grandmother of the biblical Jesus as a descendant of the predatory Queen Cleopatra. She and her daughter, Helena, were supreme matriarchs of what is referred to as the Eastern Illuminati. Their saga is partly disclosed in concealed form in the New Testament in works of Josephus Flavius. Also, the amuse was also known as Cleopatra, like her mother, Thea, means goddess. Her lands in Syria were the real kingdom of heaven. Her daughter, Queen Julia Helena Arania, was the Bible's Virgin Mary. These Edison royals were originally Atonists from Egypt. In the first century, while resident in Syria, they converted to Judaism and lent their support to the fourth sect of Nazarene Christianity. This set them against the fifth sect, which became what we know now as Papal Christianity, headquartered in Rome. As Ralph Ellis expertly proves, this Parthian Edison dynasty is spoken of cryptically in the New Testament in works of the Jewish historian Josephus Flavius, himself a lesser member of the dynasty. Although they were practically erased from history, this dynasty was connected with many historical characters and events. As descendants of the Hyksos nobility, they have intimate connections with powerful forces in Babylon, Palestine, Persia, Syria, Armenia, France, Greece, Germany, Holland, and Britain, not to mention other places. 
course, the central thesis of importance for Ralph Ellis is the identity of the biblical Jesus. As far as he is concerned, Jesus was none other than King Isaac of Edessa, son of Queen Helena of Adiabi. Thank you for sitting for another episode of Hidden in Plain Sight, the third installment of the Black Nobility Family. If you like this type of content, please subscribe. If this video is something that interests you, please give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if you have any feedback or comments, please feel free to do so respectfully.